Hey guys, this is Cam 15 back out with another video for you guys, and I'm back with another Fairy Tale 100 Year Quest manga chapter review. Now I know people, I know I got this video out a lot later than I said I was going to do, or than I typically was going to do, but um, that's on me. Literally, I'm being honest, I completely forgot the manga chapter came out this past week, so why not just do it on Saturday? Um, and stuff like that so yeah but um anyways uh this chapter is moving on this story and i'm liking this um so yeah but ignia's inclusion in the story definitely changes things and yeah and we also get appeared in a little bit to the lucy curia fight so let's get to it um this is fairy tale 100 year quest chapter 101 titled true meaning cover pages of wendy and carla I'm guessing if they were witches or something like that, um, and they're flying on a broom. So, okay, let's get to it. So, obviously, um, Celine knows that Ignea is there, and she is shocked. Now, the bird next to her, who we know is Elsera's um, bird, I forgot his name, um, is like, what is he doing here, the fire dragon god and everything? And Celine knows that's Ignea's son, and and he's she's wondering, like, is he after the heart as well? So you know it obviously this is going crazy i think now celine's like it seems like i have to take things into my own hands she ends up telling the crow the game's over but the crow ends up saying like but are you going to release El El Sarah and everything and essentially celine's like look i'll release him you know the thing is he'll be fine he won't die as long as i don't end up being defeated essentially um and stuff like that Essentially, that's if she doesn't die. So if she dies, I take it El Sarah is going to die in the pocket space dimension that Celine sent him to. So yeah, so Celine's story wraps up for this chapter in terms of she's headed to the great, great labyrinth because she says, and it was a pretty badass line, um, where she's like, only a dragon god can stop a dragon god after all. Um, so yes. Anyways, um, Natsu and... Suzuku are confronted by Ignea and Ignea is just heating the landscape around to the point it's making them both sweat including Natsu and remember guys Natsu is a fire dragon um, wielder um, and stuff like that and he's a world truly he's a fire magic user and typically fire magic people don't get affected by the environment but here oh no he, you see Natsu actually like sweating bullets which goes to show you how intense Ignea's flames are. Now, Natsu asks Ignea, like, what the hell are you doing here, dude? And essentially, Ignea is saying that there's something here he has to burn. Now, we don't know what he's got to burn, um, but he has something that he needs to burn. That could be the heart, or maybe he's talking about Selene. He wants to burn Selene. We don't know. Now, he takes a look at Natsu and he's like, Eh, you still don't cut it. You're not strong. You're not strong yet. Go get stronger before you're able to confront me and stuff like that, um, because you're a little bit too weak. Um, and obviously, Natsu, in perfect Natsu character, is like, "Why the hell are you running away? Please, you think you're all this and that? Please, I was Igniel's first son in a way, <laughs> but whatever." He he goes on to say, "Like, listen, my job is to take you, the Dragon Gods, out, and eventually I'm going to get you too. But you know what?" You saved me the trouble, so I'm going to come here and kick your ass right now. Um, so I thought that was totally cool and badass of Natsu because he's like, that's Natsu's character. I just love it. Everything. Now, Suzuku in the background, we see this part. He's trying to hold Natsu back. He's like, I don't think we should fuck with this guy, dude. We should not fight. Anyways, um, you know, that's the crew that... He that's the crazy thing because he's like, dude, I don't think we should be fighting this guy. I think we should actually back off now. In response to what Natsu's little challenge was, Ignea's like, the truth is, you only harvest something when it's ripe. There's no way you can burn me the way you are now. So Natsu, I'm guessing, goes in for a fire dragon destruction fisk or something. They don't specify what move. It, whether it was dry fire dragon iron fist or fire dragon king destruction fist, he he fires it. Um, and Ignea isn't even damaged. Ignea is like literally saying like, dude, that's the best you can do. This feels like a freaking campfire flame, to be honest, um, and stuff like that. And that's what he says. He's like, you call this a flame? It sounds more like a brisk fire, 
which goes to show you how strong Ignea is now. Suzuku's like, this dude is a fire dragon user or as a fire um, magic user. He's not going to feel any true pain from it um, and stuff like that. So Nazu's like, oh, please. I was just trying something and stuff like that. So yeah, anyways, Suzuku ends up saying, please, I'll show you what real flames is and or what real flames are. And he kind of just does this fire attack that surrounds Natsu and Suzuku that is freaking crazy. Um, and it blows a huge blast within the labyrinth and it absolutely des destroys, like it makes a gigantic hole essentially in the labyrinth and the other st the the other people whether they're diablos or fairy tale the end to pick it up and they're like what the hell is this heat and stuff like that you know and they're like okay this does not feel good and stuff like that now gaj will actually ask gray like can you cool us off and freaking um gray we haven't seen if gray can do it but he, gray's wondering like is it not sue um no because they were also confronted by um Igni as well so yeah now um misaki is like this is a very interesting turn so she knows something's up and everything so yeah anyways what happens is natsu and suzuku have been taken down for the time being and they're like what the hell and stuff like that so yeah essentially Igni is gone and and is trying to go after him but Suzuku is like, whoa, we need to wait and we need to think this out and stuff like that because we can't, you know, win this fight. And then two, um, uh, and two, um, Suzuku's like, please, we haven't stopped our fight yet. So guess what? We need to continue it now and everything. And Natsu's like, okay, fine. I'll be my win, sure. And stuff like that. And Suzuku's like, please, I'm the one that had you on the brink and stuff like that. Um, and essentially Natsu's like, look, dude, I would like to sell this with you right now, but you see, uh, my friends are in trouble and your friends are in trouble as well and stuff like that, because with Ignea going around, he's going to destroy things and he's going to take things out because he has no sympathy at all. Um, and that's when Natsu's like, so after we fight, um, after I'm done fighting him, we can fight again and stuff like that. Um, and Suzuku, that's when he just gives Natsu the agreement he's like okay fine how about this one man cannot defeat another man but two men might stand a better chance against such a powerful foe um let's team up let's join force now not who's against this idea but essentially um you get essentially he essentially gets lured in because suzuku's like well guess what your friends are gonna get hurt so why not just work together and stuff like that because if you're going to have to protect your friends, you'll do it by any means necessary. And now it's like, all right, sure, I guess you're right. Um, so let's do a tag team. And yeah, so this storyline for Natsu and Suzuku ends with them teaming up. And I won't be shocked if it's going to have to come to the whole thing of the Di the entire Diablos and Fairy Tale members in the labyrinth reluctantly realizing they have to agree to uh, work together to take out the two dragon gods. Because, hey, why not take down two birds with one stone you know you work together to take down two dragon gods here and you accomplished your goal for fairy tale and in a way we know that diablos is also looking to take down the dragon gods as well um so this would be a pretty cool way to have diablos and fairy tale working together um to take down the dragon god selene and um ignia now I think maybe they'll get some, they'll be able to take some lean down working together, but not Ignea. And maybe this could be the start of the Fairy Tale Guild and the Diablos Guild, maybe potentially starting to be like, you know what? You're not as bad as I thought you are. Maybe we just had some misunderstanding. And then, you know, obviously, you know, Fairy Tale and the Diablos Guild end up being best buddies and stuff like that. Um, I definitely feel like this is where it's going. This is the start where. Fairy Tale and Diablos end up becoming best friend guild people and stuff like that because it's the same thing with Sabretooth. You know, they had a beef with Sabretooth during the Grand Magic games, and by the time the Grand Magic game was over, um, you know, the Sabretooth and Fairy Tale guild they're friends amongst each other and stuff like that. So, yeah, this could be the start to Fairy Tale and Diablos becoming the next guild 
um, to become friends with the fairy tale guild and essentially become allies to them um, in the future um, of the series and stuff like that. So yeah, um, I think it's pretty cool. We're getting Natsu and Suzuku essentially working together and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, but anyways, we actually cut over to the last bit of the chapter where we see Curlia going up against Lucy and they're wondering like, what the hell is this heat? And their clothes are freaking burning and stuff like that. Now, Curlia, <laughs> Curlia makes a funny comment by saying, oh, Lucy, your getup is, uh, yes. Um, yes, every fairy tale fan knows that Lucy's getups are always attractive because it's Lucy Hartfilia. Who won it? Um, and stuff like that. So, um, Curlia goes on to say, come to think of it, you and I go way back at this point and stuff like that. Now, Curlia goes on to tell Lucy, look, I'm only really truly interested in strong opponents like Jill, by, like um, Misaki, Urza, and Loxus and stuff like that. But people like you, I don't get up for them. But at the same time, I don't like playing with uh, weaklings and stuff like that. So... Yeah, now Lucy's kind of reply to this whole statement is, is the fact that essentially she should double check of who you consider strong and who you consider weak. And essentially you get um, Curlia firing out all these attacks. Lucy ends up dodging these attacks um, and Lucy's like, please, you think I'm not strong? I just dodged all your attacks. And <laughs> Curlia's like, uh, you might want to check again. Lucy looks down. This girl attacked her so much that her clothes essentially are ripped up and everything. And I'm like, oh my god. And Curly is just getting funny. She's just getting pure in German. She's like, oh, I was just going for your body, you see. You know, I need to see that cuteness of yours and everything. Um, Lucy calls Curly a pervert. I'm really starting to like this. <laughs> I'm really starting to like this dynamic. Uh... You know, the, these two chicks going at it with each other. Um, so anyways, what happens is Lucy goes into her star dress cancer mode and she's like, please, if you're slashing opponents, then I'm going to slash you back and everything. And essentially Curly is like, please, you're out of my league. You're not going to cut me. And so they go back and forth. And then uh, Curly is like, did you see how that worked? I dodged all your attacks. And Lucy's like, why don't you check again? And Curly looks down. She ends up getting her clothes striped by Lucy from just getting it cut up and everything. And Lucy's like, well, that's payback for what you did to me. And the chapter ends off with Curly is like, you little shit. <laughs> um, you get a funny look. It, it, that was adorable. That, that was funny as all get up. Um, I can't wait to see the anime animate that scene for obviously the men of culture scenes because uh the plot but i just can't wait to see this scene because clearly um curly and lucy have some sort of dynamic going on they're really bonding in this fight are they gonna be best friends somehow weirdly we can we know lucy has made some weird like friends out of the people she's fought like brandish is one of the weird ones um and stuff like that Curly would be another person that's out of the weird blue um, and stuff like that. But hey, um, it was pretty dang good of a chapter. Um, and I'm definitely interested to see where the story is going to be going. Um, so, yeah, um, we're going to continue, probably continue on with the Curly and Lucy fight. That's seemingly where the next chapter is going to go until unless they say, unless they run to Natsu and Suzuku and they say, listen, we need to team up with these guys because we're going to stand no chance Igni is here and stuff like that so yeah um i definitely could see it to where they walk in right as lucy did that and they're like uh what the hell's going on here um and stuff like that so yeah um it's pretty interesting um igni is there i wonder what Celine's gonna do i have a more feeling that Celine's gonna be taken out this time of go around whether it's because of ignia or rather because the team up between diablos and fairy tale and all the thing, the, 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 all the thing Diablo says to say, well, she came into our guild and killed her guild master and stuff like that. So let's work together to take her down. Now, the only rent, wrenches I see thrown in this whole idea is the fact that the only two people in the Diablo skill that I don't see them potentially working alongside this whole plan is Masaki and Kirin. 
they're the only two people that I would see potentially like saying, why are you guys working with Fairy Tale? Well, we have to take these guys down. We could get our guild back. I definitely could see it to where Kieran and Masaki are like, oh, please, we're not going to work with these guys. We're going to side with this dragon god um, and stuff like that. The other members definitely will work with them. Um, I think Kirlia will work, would be fine to work with them. We already know Suzuku is fine to work. Um, maybe the other two that are knocked out at the moment would be fine to work with. And we also know um, the dude who fought um, Wendy, he's simping for Wendy like crazy. So, of course, he's going to fight alongside um, them if it comes to like If it comes to the story, story I think that's going to happen. Definitely, um, I think he'll do that because he wants to protect Wendy because he loves Wendy. He simps for Wendy. And like I said, who doesn't simp for Wendy? Um, anyways, um, but that's kind of it. So, yeah. Um, enjoy this chapter. It was a good chapter. Again, sorry for getting this chapter late. I completely forgot we got a manga chapter this week. And then, like I said, I'm, I'm doing school. So, all this stuff is kind of um all over the place but anyways guys if you guys like the video if you guys like the video leave a like put in the comment section your thoughts on this week's episode uh why do i keep doing that uh, this week's manga chapter of fairy tale um 100 year quest as well as the subscribe button um if you want to get more fairy tale content as well as any other anime content i upload to the channel but other than that guys i'm gonna get out of here hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day or night with channel until then guys peace